Who are the biggest X factors for this Denver Broncos team against the Seattle Seahawks in their showdown on Monday night? Football Plus, where has the Broncos special teams unit improved and what are we looking for specifically in Monday night's showdown? Not to mention, Russell Wilson is making his return to where it all began. Will the emotion be too big or will the Broncos rise up to the occasion? You get that and much more on today's brand new episode, Locked on Broncos. You are locked on Broncos. Your daily Denver Broncos podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up, Broncos country? Welcome into a brand new episode, Locked On Broncos, your daily Denver Broncos podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team Every day. Thank you so much to everybody in Broncos country for tuning in and making Lockdown Broncos your first listen of the day. Whether you listen on your favorite audio podcasting platforms or whether you watch us on YouTube, we appreciate you so much. Do us a favor, hit that subscribe or that follow button so you never miss out on a day's worth of Denver Broncos news, content coverage, and more every single day, all year long, from the South Stands to the end zone. I'm your host, as always, Cody Rourke, Broncos beat reporter from Mile High Sports, joined alongside by my co host, Sir Benger. He's the site expert, predominantly orange. Dot com. And Broncos Country, real quick, just want to say, hope you guys enjoyed yesterday's crossover episode with Corbin Smith of the Locked On Seahawks podcast, breaking down the big matchup. You got to hear from the Seahawks perspective of things, and Seahawks fans got to hear a little bit about the Broncos side of things. So if you missed that, make sure you go check that out. But Sarah, my friend, hey, you know what? Let's get into today's episode of the show. We're going to talk about the biggest X factors for this team in Monday's game. We're going to talk about special teams and things that we're looking for specifically on Monday. And you know what? Is the emotion of Russell Wilson return going to be too big or will the Broncos rise to the occasion I can't wait to break it all down with you my man I can't wait Cody we're one day closer right one day closer to game day it's you can just feel it in your bones right the Broncos are about to play another regular season game and it's a new era and uh, when we're talking about this whole Russell Wilson thing I can't help but think back to something that he said you know like he, he basically said like he doesn't get nervous before games and I find that very interesting because you know like we perform every day we're we're on air we're, we're recording we're, we're kind of putting ourselves out there I still get the butterflies every once in a while before I get ready to perform anything just like man it's not like nervous in a bad way but it's just like you know you got that adrenaline rush I think Russell Wilson Cody he he's maybe underselling a little bit but we'll talk more about that in a bit but for now I think that definitely when you're talking about x factors for this game there is nobody bigger for the Denver Broncos in terms of being an X factor than number three under center. Oh, and I think that's the biggest thing. He will be the biggest X factor so far on the offensive side of the ball for this Denver team against his former team on Monday Night Football. And we, we've said it. The Broncos will go as far as Russ takes him. And this is not like what we had talked about last year with Teddy Bridgewater. We had no idea what Teddy Bridgewater was or wasn't going to be after the first three weeks of the season. We were kind of confused, like, why is Teddy airing it out? Like, this is not normal. And then we saw Teddy kind of become who Teddy was previously. So the th- first three weeks of the season last year were different. But with Russell Wilson, it- it's totally different with him under center, in command of this offense, in command of this football team. He's going to be a huge X factor, not only just from the operation and the flow of the offense, because this is the first time we'll actually see him in a game setting taking reps in Nathaniel Hackett's offense. So for him, it's going to be up to him to get set the tone early on, get guys going, get the run game going with Javante Williams and Melvin Gordon, maybe even Mike Boone. But more importantly, it's about making the receivers around him better, which he has demonstrated all throughout training camp, all throughout the preseason in terms of just the practices that Denver has had. But now you have to carry it over where it really counts, and that is the game. It's exactly right, you know, and we've we've heard all these great things this offseason about how the offense has looked throughout training camp, even as they take their lumps against a really good defense and practices, you know, there's been plenty of good for this offense throughout camp. And it is you're right. It's completely different now that we're in a game setting and we haven't got to see that from Russell Wilson in a Denver Broncos uniform yet. So I think we're equal parts excited and also nervous because like Broncos fans have kind of gotten used to not really good quarterback play. And, and I'm not saying that that they're pessimistic going into this game but I think that a lot of fans myself included we're just like we're ready to see it like it, it's this this whole build up this whole anticipation we're just waiting right we're just waiting to see that things are going to be better we want to know like we want to see and know that things are going to actually be better and so Russell Wilson he's the biggest x factor Cody but defensively I can't help but think that Pat Sertan going up against DK Metcalf in this game we we assume 
for the majority of this game. The wide receiver won, one of the highest paid receivers in the league now, which congrats to DK on that. He definitely deserved it. Now he's going up against Pat Sertan, who last year, Cody, I mean, he put the clamps on just about everybody that the Broncos played against. And so this is going to be not not just not just a biggest X factor, but like for any general NFL fans watching this game on Monday night primetime, this is really going to be like the must see TV when you're talking about the matchups and you're talking about just a football lover's dream out there. DK Metcalf, size, speed, athleticism, everything you want in a wide receiver. And then you got Pat Sertan, who's kind of like the equal and opposite reaction on the defensive side. Oh, I'm excited about this. And this is going to be a huge test for Sertan. Look, we've we've talked about how he's matched up against Tyreek Kill and how he's excelled in those Jamar Chase. But this is a new NFL season, right? And at any moment in the NFL, you can get God. But, you know, with Pat Sertan's level of preparation, I'm excited to see how he responds to the challenge of going up against a guy. I don't think he's ever gone against a guy with the size and stature and like the physicality of a guy like DK Metcalf in his entire career. NFL career. Now, granted, it's only been a year, but it feels like we're talking about a seven-year veteran here with Patrick Sertan. That's just the way that he carries himself, and that's the perception that he creates. But can he take advantage of optimizing many some opportunities? Like Geno Smith is going to be the quarterback, right? So he can still throw the football downfield, and even Bradley Chubb alluded to it. He can even get outside. So they've been practicing against a scrambling quarterback all throughout the entire offseason going against Russell Wilson. But he doesn't have the arm that Russ has, in a sense. And we've seen Russell Wilson try to test a guy like Patrick Sertan with Cortland Sutton. And Sertan has obviously gotten the better of those matchups there. Can he do the same thing against DK Metcalf and Geno Smith? That, to me, I think is a huge, huge thing. But I think one question Broncos country wants to know, as a tackling cornerback, will he be much more improved this season? I think that's also an interesting one. And then, you know, there's another X factor, or there could be three in one that we're going to bring up as well. There could be, you know, we're talking about the pass rushers and really throughout the course of the offseason, we've seen great things in the preseason from some of the young guys, but we haven't yet got to see Bradley Chubb and Randy Gregory out on the field. And I know that Randy Gregory over the last couple of weeks, he's even just started returning to practice. So even those that like you, Cody, who were out in attendance at training camp, we get to see Randy Gregory walk out of the locker room, but to see him out on the field going up against Garrett Bowles or going up against maybe Billy Turner or Calvin Anderson, we haven't really got to see that. We haven't even got to hear like the hype rumors of like, hey, Randy Gregory is just looking awesome out there. I, I'm looking forward to this edge group of, of Bradley Chubb, Randy Gregory, and now Baron Browning stepping in for Malik Reed, who was traded away to the Pittsburgh Steelers. Those are your top three edge players going into this game, Cody. And really last year, that was an area of weakness for the Denver Broncos defense. So that is going to be a huge X factor going into this game because you're going to have Draymond Jones and DJ Jones commanding a lot of tension on the interior. How are those edge guys going to be able to go out there and take advantage of the opportunities that they're given? I think that that's a huge X factor in this game, that those guys win in the pass rush because they're going up against some young offensive tackles. The, the Seahawks, we're not sure who's going to start at right tackle for them, if it's going to be uh, uh, if it's going to be Abraham Lucas or if it's going to be a college free agent, Jake Kerr. Hand, but we know their starting left tackle is the biggest piece so far of the Russell Wilson trade return in terms of draft capital, Charles Cross, the left tackle out of Mississippi State. So certainly those those edge rushers are going to have an opportunity going up against some rookies or some young guys out there at the tackle position to really make a huge impact in this game. Well, I'm excited to see how it all pans out because I think this is interesting with the Broncos pass rush and just what we saw in the preseason joint training camp practices against the Dallas Cowboys. The Broncos edge rushers were getting after Dak Prescott and their backup quarterbacks. And so I think that it kind of maybe bodes well, you know, coming in fresh and against, uh, you know, two rookie OTs. I I think that, you know, Denver has an advantage here. But Broncos country, let us know down below in the YouTube comment section which players are your X factors for the Broncos against the Seattle Seahawks on Monday Night Football. But coming up here in just a moment, we're going to talk about the improvement on the special team side of the ball, what we're looking for specifically on Monday Night Football with this unit and some of the challenges that maybe they can overcome themselves. But before we do that, let me tell you about LinkedIn, the sponsor of today's episode, Lockdown Broncos. And as you gear for fall, you need the right people on your team to help your small business fire on all cylinders. LinkedIn Jobs is here to make it easier to find the people that you want to talk to faster and for free. 
Create a free job post in minutes on LinkedIn Jobs to reach your network and beyond to the world's largest professional network of over 810 million people. Then add your job and the purple hashtag hiring frame to your LinkedIn profile to spread the word that you're hiring so your network can help you find the right people to hire. Simple tools like screening questions make it easy to focus on candidates with just the right skills and experience so you can quickly prioritize who you'd like to interview and hire. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the candidates that you want to talk to faster. Did you know that every week, nearly 40 million job seekers visit LinkedIn? So post your job for free at LinkedIn.com slash LockedOnNFL. That's LinkedIn.com slash LockedOnNFL to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. As we jump into the second half action on today's episode of Lockdown Broncos, the Broncos special teams unit has a new fire under them with special teams coordinator Dwayne Stukes. There's been some ups, there's been some downs in the preseason, but can the Broncos pass the ultimate test on Monday Night Football? Thank you so much, Broncos country, for making Lockdown Broncos your first listen of the day. Every single day on your favorite audio podcasting platform, whether you watch us on YouTube, we have you covered every single day, all year long. Let's get into the special team side of things here. And I think that we even received a question in our mailbag this past week from one avid listener here in Broncos country. And they asked, you know, about the the biggest improvements that special teams will make coming into the regular season. And Sarah, I just felt like coming into the regular season, where did we see the Broncos take strides on special teams? I think the biggest one, the most evident one, was in the return game with a guy like Montrell Washington back there. The Broncos seemingly in the preseason had a bigger boost and was able to make things happen a little bit more fluidly. I mean, when you have three or four returners that average 30 yards per return, that is a good sign. But even Dwayne Stu says, we can block it even better. Yeah, and I think what's cool about that is, Cody, is like what we had gotten used to over the last few years is anytime the Broncos had a big return, everybody on their couch and everybody at the stadium is waiting for the yellow flag or the yellow flag graphic to pop up on TV because we're waiting for, hey, where's the block in the back or where's the holding or where's the illegal this or where's the illegal that? We didn't see any penalties like that in the preseason from the Broncos special team. So although Dwayne Stukes, you know, he seems kind of like one of those guys that, hey, no matter where we're at, we're not going to be satisfied. I think definitely, even though it's just preseason, and maybe especially because it's preseason, it's a lot of guys that are going to be either on your practice squad or not on your roster at all. You're blocking these things pretty well, well enough to not get called for any penalties, which is awesome. So not only is the return game improved, but like I think the blocking has improved. And I think that also on the other side of that, when you're talking about kickoff coverage, the Broncos, they kicked the ball in the field to play so that other teams could return most of the time in terms of the kickoff game and the punt game. They were really trying to kind of see what they got from their, from their punters in terms of, Hey, can you pin them deep? Can you get hang time? Can you kick it out of bounds, directional kicking this and that and the other, but the kickoff coverage to me, Cody was vastly improved. It seemed like they were trying to pin them to one side of the field and then really just maintaining gaps. Like you, you talked about this before in another episode where we were kind of breaking this down a lot of times in, in the Tom McMahon era, these, coverage guys would kind of abandon their gaps they would abandon their lane on the kickoff coverage and all of a sudden then you have a returner kind of replacing where they're supposed to be and taking it for a big gain downfield so I feel like we saw vastly improved a couple missed tackles here or there but I think we saw vastly improved kickoff coverage which that's going to be huge I mean I don't think we I don't think Brandon McManus is planning on kicking the ball inbounds all that often on kickoffs but it's good to know that if it does happen to get returned the kickoff coverage looks Quite improved. Well, let's talk about flipping field position now. Let's take a look at the punter situation. Now, Corliss Waitman won the job from veteran Sam Martin throughout the preseason. And just the the noticeable thing that we've talked about here on the show ad nauseum with Corliss Waitman, he just has a booming leg. And he's got the ability to put the ball in the air for a long time. I mean, his best hang time in the preseason was 5.33. That does wonders for your coverage guys that are trying to get downfield. It allows them to get down there. And we even talked about it on the six punt attempts that Cordless Waitman had all throughout the entire preseason five of them were fair caught one of them was a touchback so you know what he did his job he won it now you have to carry that over into the regular season because far too often it felt like last year for this Broncos team combining with 
kick coverage, combining with maybe even punt coverage. It seemed like opposing offenses were starting at midfield or close to midfield way too often in 2021. And if the Broncos are going to be successful, if they're going to have sustainability and the ability to maybe even make the playoffs, you have to be better in this area. You have to try to flip the field position where if Cordless Waitman can boom a punt and it just hangs high and you can get your coverage guys down there, you're either going to allow your coverage guys to field the punt themselves or you're going to force the fair catch inside the five, inside the 10. And I think that's a dynamic the Broncos have not had in quite some time here with Corliss Wayman. So that is something that I'm looking forward to seeing with this Denver Broncos team and special teams this upcoming week. And not to mention, too, special teams is also a great opportunity for guys that maybe you're trying to rotate on the offensive side or the defensive side to maybe get involved a little bit more. So I'm looking for some standout players. Who's going to go down and make plays? Who's going to go down on kickoff and make a big-time tackle, big-time hit? To me, I'm looking forward to that. In Broncos country, we want to know what you're looking forward to with the special teams unit down below in the YouTube comment section. But Broncos country, coming up here in just a moment, we're going to talk about the return of Russ to Seattle. Will the emotion of the return have any impact on him on Monday Night Football? We talk about the pros and cons coming up here in just a moment. But before we do that, Let me tell you about this. If you're a Colorado sports fan, we have a Locked On podcast show for you. Obviously, you're watching. If you're a Denver Broncos fan, Locked On Broncos has you covered every single day all year long. If you love the Denver Nuggets, their season's starting up here in October, and you can check out the Locked On Nuggets podcast with Adam Matez and Matt Moore as they give you all the pick-and-roll action of the back-to-back MVP, Nikola Jokic. Can he make it three in a row, and can the Nuggets push for an NBA Finals appearance? You have the Stanley Cup champions, defending Stanley Cup champions, Colorado Avalanche. We have a Locked On Avalanche podcast for you, hosted by Chris Maselli and Kyle Sullivan. And we have the Locked On Rockies podcast, hosted by Paul Holden. Make sure you check it out. If you're a Colorado sports fan, the Locked On Podcast Network has a show for you. Will Russell Wilson's return to Seattle, where it all began, will that moment be too big of an emotional pull and could it impact the Broncos in a negative way? Thank you so much, Broncos country, for tuning in and making Lockdown Broncos your first listen of the day. Sarah, I think this is really the question that so many people have this week. And I, I think that the emotional pull, like we've heard from Russell Wilson this week at the podium talking about just his return to Seattle. He's all business. Like he's laser focused. He is locked in. But the question that I have here is when you go back to a place where you spent, you know, this is where your career started. This is where you got the chance. I mean, I remember clear as day, Matt Flynn being the quarterback for the Seahawks, but Russell Wilson coming in in the preseason and absolutely just lighting up other NFL teams. That's when you could play four preseason games. He lit up the Broncos in one of those games. I remember that in the preseason, his rookie year. Mm -hmm. And you have to wonder, is the return going to have any impact on him? Now, Here's an interesting thing. I don't think it necessarily will, Sarah. And the reason why is he he works with uh, you know some of the top sports psychologists, mental trainers in the entire world, guys that used to work with Kobe Bryant, Michael Jordan. So for me, I mean, working with those guys, I do think that he does have an advantage. And that if he says that you know he doesn't feel any emotion by it, he's not feeling any pressure by it. I mean, part of me believes him. Yeah, you got to right. I mean, this is a guy, Russell Wilson. I was just looking at this, Cody. 32 game-winning drives in this guy's career. 36 if you include the playoffs. I mean, he does kind of have ice in his veins, doesn't he? He's that guy. He's one of the most clutch quarterbacks of this generation. So certainly you got to believe him at least a little bit when he says, no, I don't get nervous at things like that. I mean, he does seem supremely confident. You know, we, we've, we've only got to know Russell from a day-to-day standpoint over the course of the last, what, six months at this point. And from the last six months, I feel like we can really tell, like, man, this guy is confident in himself. He's confident in his teammates. He's confident in everything that he says. Like, he's very much a confident dude out there. And so I think that what he brings to the table, and of course, this is a familiar environment for him. Like, even if he does come out, and and what what's he going to hear from the Seattle fans? I hope, Cody... Man, I can't I can't stress this enough. It would be so dumb if the Seahawks fans boo Russell Wilson. It, you boo any quarterback that has helped bring you a Super Bowl title. That that would be absolutely ridiculous. So I hope that he's greeted by a, a, a just a roar of cheers from the crowd because he's arguably the greatest player in their franchise history and maybe not even arguably. But Russell Wilson, if he comes out, what's he going to hear? Is he going to hear boos? Is he going to hear cheers? I think one way or another, he's going to know that, hey, I'm in my element here. Like, I've won a lot of games here already. 
I'm just wearing a different uniform this time. And that's going to be huge for him, right? I mean, there, I think he's got, he's got to be at least fibbing just a little bit, Cody, if he doesn't say he's got a little bit of a chip on his shoulder for this game or he's got a little extra emotion going into this game. I know that, the, that he's going to tell the media, yeah, this is another game. You know, of course, he's going to be excited to be back in Seattle in front of all the fans, and he's going to say all the right things. But, man, behind closed doors, I can't help but think at least a little bit Russell's got to be excited to go back in there and get a chance to beat his former team. Well, I heard, uh, you know, there were some comments on Twitter. Somebody said, you know, after the game, which which player is Russ getting a jersey from? And I was like, probably like Tyler Lockett or DK Metcalf. Somebody said Pete Carroll, which, you know, made me laugh a little bit there. But, <laughs> you know, here's also the thing, too. You know, we talk about the boos and the cheers and, and really trying to anticipate, you know, what the arguably one of the loudest stadiums in the entire NFL is well, I'll see you in Seattle. Uh, you know, what – what type of response like will he get from the fans? Because, you know, we've had a lot of Seahawks fans. We've had some salty Seahawks fans in our YouTube comments talking about Russell Wilson. And then we've had Seahawks fans who are like, man, I don't know why Seahawks fans are acting like, the, you know, this way towards Russell Wilson. They're like, we appreciate Russ and the time that he had there. So it's one of those things you're going to have to see. Because, like, is it going to be similar to, like, when Peyton Manning made his return to Indianapolis? I don't think so. I think this is uh, definitely different because it was – the Colts that decided to part ways with Peyton, but with Russ, it was kind of like a mutual decision by both of them. So a lot of people hold the outrage towards Russell Wilson. In my opinion, they should be holding that towards, you know, the front office for keeping, you know, a guy like Pete Carroll around when they could have invested in a young offensive minded head coach. Maybe they could even made a push for Nathaniel Hackett if they would have decided that initially before the off season even began. But you know what? Here we are. The story kind of writes itself. Russell Wilson will make his return to Seattle to take on the Seahawks on Monday night football leading up to the game Sarah Benninger and myself with a pregame episode of the show will have you covered with keys to victory and much more on the next episode locked on Broncos